Hello everyone and welcome to another Sutton Anatomy Hub video. My name's Deeps and today we're going to be looking at the subclavian artery, its course, its branches and what they supply. But before that there are a few important things that we need to remember. Firstly, the origins of the subclavian artery are not symmetrical. On the right side it branches off of the brachiocephalic trunk, one of the branches from the aorta. However on the left it directly branches off the arch of the aorta. I find it easy to remember if you think that the left side comes off the loop of the aorta because they both start with an L. Okay, our second important point is that the subclavian artery travels up and goes on to form the axillary artery around the area of the first rib and then later goes on to become the brachial artery. If you want to find out more about the axillary artery, make sure to check out our last video for more information. Our final important point is that the subclavian artery runs behind the anterior scalene muscle, but in front of the middle and posterior scalene muscles, also known as the scalene mass. Right, I know that that was a lot of information, so let's try and simplify it all and make it easier to understand with the help of a diagram. First, it's really important to orientate ourselves around the surrounding structures before we even get started on the vasculature. If you have a look at the image, you can see that we're looking at the right side of the body and at the bottom you have the manubrium and the first rib. And they're both joined together with the sternoclavicular joint. Attached to the first rib, you can see a pretty important muscle that I mentioned earlier, called the anterior scalene muscle. Now this is quite useful both functionally and anatomically. Functionally, it's responsible for elevating the first rib during deep inspiration and also laterally flexing the neck to the same side. But if you have a look, you can see that subclavian artery passes right behind it. And because of that, we can use the anterior scalene as a landmark to split up the subclavian into three parts. The first part runs behind the manubrium all the way to the medial border of the anterior scalene muscle. The second is the part of the artery that's hidden behind the anterior scalene, but in front of the scalene mass. Finally, our last section runs from the lateral border of the anterior scalene to the lateral border of the first rib where it then goes on to become the axillary artery that runs through the underarm. So, so far we've covered the surrounding structures and the course of the artery. Time to get to the more complicated stuff, and that means understanding the branches that come off the artery and what they supply. Now there are quite a few, so to make it easier, we have a handy mnemonic for you to remember them all. Vitamin C and D. Each letter represents each of the branches. Now the first three all stem from the first part of the subclavian artery. So let's start with the vertebral artery. This leaves the subclavian and travels straight up the cervical spine through the transverse foramina of the vertebra. The vertebral arteries on both sides then travel up the neck and join up to form the basilar artery, which is a vital component of the circle of Willis that supplies the blood to the brain. Next, we have the internal thoracic artery. While the vertebral artery runs upwards, the internal thoracic artery travels inferiorly behind the ribs. It used to be called the internal mammary artery, and that's because it's responsible for supplying the anterior chest wall and the breasts using many of its branches. Around the sixth intercostal space, it bifurcates into two of its terminal branches, the superior epigastric and the muscular phrenic. Next, we have our super important thyrocervical trunk. Now it's called a trunk because it's really short and has branches of its own. The first two branches are super easy to remember. The thyro part of thyrocervical refers to the inferior thyroid artery, which supplies the posterior and inferior aspects of the thyroid gland. The cervical part refers to the superficial cervical artery. Now this is also known as the transverse cervical artery because it horizontally passes over the anterior scalene muscle through the posterior triangle of the neck until it reaches levator scapulae at which point it branches into deep and superficial branches. The branch of the thyrocervical trunk that's not as easy to remember is the suprascapular artery, which extends along the inferior belly of the omohyoid to supply the scapular muscles around the back. Fantastic. We've covered the first three of five branches, and the last two branches are super easy to remember. The C part of it C and D refers to the costocervical trunk, which emerges from the second part of the subclavian, right behind the anterior scalene muscle. Now that's right, you've guessed it. Because it's a trunk, this means it's short and also has some branches of its own. The costopar refers to the superior intercostal artery, 
which travels inferiorly, then splits into the first two posterior intercostal arteries that supply the first two intercostal spaces that allow for the ribs to move outwards and inwards with inspiration and expiration. The cervical part refers to the deep cervical artery that gives us several spinal branches to supply the spinal cord, as well as muscular branches to supply the deep muscles of the neck and the upper back. Finally, we have our last branch of the subclavian artery called the dorsal scapular artery. Now this stems from the third part of the subclavian and passes laterally to supply the muscles of the neck and upper back, specifically levator scapulae, the rhomboids and trapezius. Excellent. So today we've managed to take you through the course of the subclavian artery, split it up into three parts and also discuss the function of five of its branches, two of which are trunks. Now I hope this was a really helpful overview. If you enjoyed, please make sure to hit the like button and leave us a comment as well. And don't forget to subscribe for more from Sutton Anatomy Hub.